This video will talk about the DB browser for SQLite. What it is is a free tool that you can use to create databases, maintain databases. Uh, very simple to use. We love the fact that it's free. So the first thing you need to do is go to this website, https sqlitebrowser.org. Once you get to this website, this page just tells you what SQLite uh, DB browser for SQLite is. SQLite actually is um, a database framework that Microsoft has created and it's sort of a scaled down ver version of SQL Server and it's great for testing, great for small applications so um, we're going to use that in this course so we need to use a tool that allows us to go and create databases, look at databases and you can use your regular SQL Server version if you want but this is just a nice scaled down version. Very powerful. We can create databases, we can create tables, we can create indexes, we can add records, delete records, edit records, search for records, import and export data. It's a very good tool. So when you come to this page, go click on the download link right here. And on the download, there's different versions that you can download. If you're going to use Windows, it will be one of these. If you're using Mac, it will be that one. I use Windows so I'm going to go ahead and download a Windows version and I'm going to look for a 64-bit Windows operating system. Now if you don't know which uh, operating system you're using in Windows I can pretty much guarantee that at this point you're using a 64-bit. But if you don't know which one you can always uh, come down here click on this little button in Windows type in system information and let me pull this back up to where we were and you'll see that in my case I'm using a 64-bit system so that's the one I'm gonna wanna work with I'll close that and so I want this one right here you can do either of these this one's a little bit easier so I'll click on that SQLite installer and what it does is it downloads a file to your system. Click on that file once it's downloaded and it's going to begin the installation process. Click Next. Now in my case I already had it installed once and if you do then you have to go and remove it to reinstall it. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the process of removing but be aware that you will not have to do that uh, unless you've already installed it. So click on this link to install, it downloads the file, click on that file, it then begins the installation process, accept the terms, forfeiting your life to the company because we don't want to take time to read it. I like little icons to help me find it and so we're going to be using SQLite and go ahead and leave the default pathway, click next, click install and the system will begin installing the files on your system. Once it's done it comes back says finish and you now have the application installed on your computer. So how do we actually use that application? I'm going to go find that application. I should have an icon since I said I want to see the icon. It runs our application for us and here's our DB browser for SQLite. Uh, first thing I can do is click on new database and you can specify where you want to store that database. I'm going to store mine out in a folder uh, for Google Drive and I have a folder already made called SQL Practice and you might want to do that if you ever want to make websites using Node Express. Make a folder out there and let's call this database um, My First DB and just click Save. Now that you have a database it says well we probably need to put tables in there because the database is the folder more or less structure wise and the tables are little subfolders if you think of a filing cabinet. A database is one file that can hold zero to many tables. So let's go ahead and create a table. Tables uh, are collections of data that describe instances almost like classes in other object-oriented programming languages. So let's say we have 
a table we want to make and we're going to call it student. Notice it generates the SQL code for you. You don't even have to know SQL and it will do this for you. Then we can say let's add a field. The first field name, we're going to call it first name. And I want that to be a text field. And I want to make sure that they type something in. And I uh, want to go ahead and leave the rest of these the way they are. NN says not null. PK says primary key. In other words, that's what's used to organize the data and make it unique, make this record unique. Auto increment, if it was a t uh, an integer field, it would keep track and say you're number one, you're number two, three, four, and it would just auto increment for you. And then unique says there can be only one. So that's our first field. Click add field again. We'll say last name. We want that to be a text and we want them to make sure they type something in. Let's add another field. A record is a collection of columns or fields in a table. So you have a database, a table, and then a record. Within a record, it's made up of zero to many columns. These are columns or fields that I'm making right now. So let's have a field called ID and we'll leave it as an integer and let's go ahead and make it the primary key meaning it's unique and we're going to make it an auto incremented field so the database every time you add a record it will increment it for you and I want to now move that up to the top just for visual aesthetics so I highlight the field and I click move field up and let's say that it's all I want to store I'll click OK it creates the table there's my table right there now I can click Browse Data. And in the Browse Data, you can choose which table you want to work with. I'm working with Student. And I want to add a new record. Now don't be confused with these fields as being where you're adding records. These are ways for you to filter what records you see down below. Let me show you how that works. New record. Notice it automatically incremented the ID field. because That's auto incremented. First name will be Buck, second name will be Wheat. When I work with data, I like to make sure that my data is consistent, either all uppercase, all lowercase. Just be consistent on how you store your data. You could do a capital B and a capital W, that's fine, just be consistent. New record, auto incremented, this will be um, Darla Rascal for the little rascals. New record. This will be Spanky Spam. So I now have three records here, right? Let's go back to the database structure. Go back to student. And when I click on this arrow, I can see the structure of the student. When I right mouse click on it, I can browse the table, modify or delete the table. I want to modify. Yes, save everything. I want to come down to here and let's add a brand new field. And let's add a field called age, or actually let's do GPA, and we're going to make that a real, meaning it has decimal numbers. Add a field, age, and that's going to be an integer. We're going to go ahead and allow those to be empty if we don't want to give it data. Click OK. Let's go back to browse data. Notice we have nulls here, and that's okay, because we said it doesn't have to have a value. But let's go ahead and put values in there. 3.4, 3.7, 3.2. Let's go to the age. 19, 21, 20. So we've added data to these fields now. This allows you to navigate through the records. But the important thing now I want to show you is we could do this. Click and filter and say I want everything that is greater than 3.4. Oh, I have a typo on that one, don't I? So I can go change that. Okay, everything that's greater than 3.4. What if I said greater than equal 3.4? How about greater than equal 3.4 and they're 19 years old? 
or greater than 19 years old. And so what this filter does for you is when you're looking at the data, it doesn't <clears throat> change the data in the table, but it's just changing your view of how you look at the data. If you don't want these records in there, you can right mouse click or just highlight that record, delete record, and it's gone. Now, remember, it's not completely gone because I can click revert changes. Yes, do I want to put it back since the last time you save it? Maybe not because of all the structure stuff. So instead of doing that, let's just write our changes. That now forces a writing of all the data, all the structure to uh, the file that we have out there. If I do start to make a mistake though, and I say, you know, I don't like that, I can click a revert changes, yes, go back, and it will put it back the way it was. If I had more than one database that I was working with, which you can, I would click attach database, and then just go grab the other database file that you wanted to open and work with all the tables and the columns and the data inside. And so this is a great little free tool. Uh, we just showed you the very basics of using it. That's all you're going to need for our course. But someday you ought to take some time and go learn more about this. Once you get into the BYU Information Systems core courses, you will learn uh, what all these things mean and become more powerful with databases. But this is a tool that we're going to be, create our, be able to create our databases and then have our Node Express websites communicate with these databases and add records and delete records and update records.